Hi everyone, welcome back to another video for Channel 3 No Drafts. I think this is going to be number 9 or number 10. We open Gideon. Very lucky to have this super powerful Mythic Rare. By the way, I love how the art kind of is transparent below the... I guess... Uh, whatever this line is called. The card type. So we'll definitely take Gideon. So just in case you guys don't know what he does, uh, during your turn it's a 4-4. Four, four. It, it, it stops being a 4-4 four, four at the end of your turn, so it's quite easy to kill. And then it's got uh, plus one. Uh, another creature can get lifelink, vigilance, or indestructible, and minus six, which only takes two turns to tick up to. You can kill something. Actually, exile any permanent. I'm sorry, it's a big difference, yeah. Exile, target, and online permanent. So pick two, Grateful Apparition. Over Lawland Enforcer, great with Gideon. You can proliferate them up to five right away, or six even, on turn three. Okay, this is a tough one. So there's Gleaming Overseer, which is really, really strong. There's also Callous Dismissal, which is one color, and not quite as strong as Gleaming Overseer. Again, this thing is Menace and Hexproof. It's two abilities for two five worth of stats for three mana. The problem is, like, it's less likely to make our deck than just a straight up Callous Dismissal. And Callous Dismissal is one of my favorite cards in the set. I think it's. People are starting to catch on to how powerful it is. But for a long time, a lot of, you know, everybody was just kind of clueless. Uh, okay. I can't pronounce this. Fibble tip. Yeah, fibble tip, unfortunately, is not going to cut it. A 1-1 one -one cantrip is cute, but it's not something that I think wins you the game. Probably just one of these Raskus finishers. Or I'll take Honor the God Pharaoh. Honor the God Pharaoh, also a very good card. I could have taken that uh, <clears throat> Divine Arrow, but I I'm not really big on that card. Okay, there's a Tibble Trader now. There's also a Toll of the Invasion and a Death Sprout. I think maybe just Tibble Trader. I've heard varying opinions on this card, but I find it's very useful, especially in the Black Red Sacrifice. I'm going to take it over to the Invasion. Uh, Wonder. Okay, Wonder is really good. I'm going to take it over the other Toll of the Invasion here. Okay, now we get a good black card with Dreadmall Ken. There's also a Worse Creature, and we know we're white. All right, I'll take the white card. I don't want to stretch my. I don't want to stretch myself in too many directions. So it looks like white is our base, and I'm happy because with Gideon and uh, Apparition and Wonder, it's it's very strong. Gallus Dismissal and Honor of the God Pharaoh both works work with uh, Grateful Apparition. So at this point, I do want to maximize uh, any cards that I can later pro proliferate onto, even something like a Goblin Assault team. When this dies, this gets a plus one, plus one counter, so we can take it. Gal's Dismissal is looking kind of lonely, and right now we're core, like, red-white. Which can be a good archetype. It needs a couple of uh, uh, hard fires to work, some cheap removal, a couple of, uh, what do you call them, spell gorgers. And then you could have a pretty strong deck. So here's Invade the City, Spellkeeper Weird. I'm going to take Spellkeeper in case I end up uh, some combination of red and blue. Now I'll probably just take the Colorless card. Or actually, no, Raging Crunch is good. Okay, another Goblin Assault Team and a Bulwark Giant. Goblin Assault Teams can be good with uh, the Pegasus. 
makeshift battalion. And uh, I want to see if I can maximize a plus one plus one counter and proliferate team. If we get another one of these grateful apparitions, we can, you know, we can go off. You can't really build your deck around one, but if nobody else is uh, picking white cards late, by the way, this is so annoying that the last few picks are kind of like auto signed. I'm not sure why they can't fix that bug, but that's a consistent issue. Usually it doesn't make a difference. I don't think it made a different once, difference once, but it doesn't feel like you get to pick one of the two remaining non-land cards in the pack, which blows my mind why that wouldn't be the case. So Dreadhorde Invasion is kind of overrated, I think. Not that it's, it's a good card, but here's the thing. At the end of the day, it's like a 1-1 one -one body on turn 3. And in some cases, it could be a liability. So I think I just want a Kaya, which is, again, something I can proliferate onto with Grateful Apparition. It's a very powerful card. Keeps the path clear. Wow, there's a Kazminum. <clears throat> and there's also a Burning Prophet. This is so tough. Oh, I have to take Kazmina. Come on. We'll figure this out. Wonder Strike actually does a good job of proliferating. Probably I like it better than non Dreadhorde Twins, I think. Yeah, it's just solid removal with a proliferate upside. I, I don't regret taking Kazmina. I, maybe we can splash her. I mean, she's just so powerful for limited. You get two bodies and you get to loot twice. Sometimes more if you can keep proliferating onto this. And now Ral's Outburst. All right. I mean, if you're going to send me a loud message, I can read it. I'm not going to ignore what I'm being passed. Easy Prison Realm. I do want some fixing now. And it is awkward to have splashed cards like this in essentially like an aggro uh, Boros deck. But again, if we get a Mana Geode, and a guild globe. I'm willing to go to like 21 playables essentially to make sure I can play all these cards. We probably don't, we could, we could improve the Goblin Assault teams and we don't really need blue right now until turn four. There's a Spellgorger weird, excellent. Both my splash cards work with it as this grateful operation. I guess I should add this just to keep an eye on it. But Catalyst Dismissal, you don't really want to splash. It's useful like uh, on turn two is something that can slow things down, but it loses power. As efficient as it is, it loses power later in the game. You want to be able to like double spell with this and get a big attack in or or do it early. You don't want to be casting this on turn eight. That's not doing much for you. All right. Let's see where this leads us. Lazatep splitting. Lazatep splitting has gone gone up a little bit. For me, it's it's a really good sideboard card. Here's the thing, like the instant speed of mass one, often you can just pump your 2-2 two -two army to take out an attacking 2-2. Two -two. Like just as a plus one plus one instant speed spell, it's not bad. That is the latest Electromancer I think I've seen. <laughs> wow. Gift. So I definitely want like at least one or two Jai's Greetings, Chandra's Triumphs, just early stuff to keep the path clear and pump Spell Gorger and add value to the graveyard for Electromancer. Here it's a Law Rune Enforcer. Doesn't look like blue's happening. 
but let's let's see what else uh, we get in pack three. Hey, if I open a top net, the blue got eternal, then I'll force blue. Even if I open Ral, Ral is ridiculously overpowered. So things I'm prioritizing: Mana Geode, Guild Globe, and I guess Gateway Plaza. Yeah, I think like three islands is three sources of blue would be okay. So something like Mana Geode, Guild Globe, and one or two islands, I think, would be fine in a deck like this. Kaya is triple blue, so that's why I prefer to minimize, not have to put it more than one island, essentially. Rouse Outburst also combos nicely with Electromancer because let's say you get a creature and a sorcerer, you can take the creature, dump the sorcerer into your graveyard to get value later off Electromancer. Maybe maybe we'll play Samoth Spirit just as a cheap, cheap spell. I guess it works with Spell Gorger, makes it like a five forward instant speed. Feeds the graveyard, protects Gideon also. Well, not really. No, it doesn't really protect Gideon, does it? Total lost. Maybe. So things that I'd like to see in pack three is uh, Feather, 10th uh, District Legionnaire. Could also be good in a deck like this, especially if I can get some more combat tricks. Maybe I should have taken a second Salmon Spirit for that reason. Divine Arrow this late is pretty good. What? What? Why would it? Uh, you know, that was like a relevant pick wasted there by, uh, by the computer. It's kind of annoying, actually. <laughs> I mean, watch will still 3-0 you know, even with the computer auto picking return to nature instead of a very relevant white cheap removal spell that also works with spell gorger. That's kind of frustrating. At least, at least we got an auto pick Sarkin's Catharsis instead of some, I don't know, instead of another Neoform, I guess. But that is so annoying. Magic needs to fix that seriously. Yeah, you know, these are definitely relevant picks. Like four cards left in the pack. You can't just auto assign these things to people. Let them make their pick. Looks like we're ahead of everybody else, so we got to wait for other players to catch up. Yeah. That's super frustrating, though. Like, imagine what, like, again, it's, it's auto signing Domri's ambush. You see this? I'm not picking anything. That is so annoying. It's not like I'm out of time either. I can't be because I'm the first, I'm ahead of everybody else. Anyway, whatever. Hopefully it's not going to matter too much. Sarkin's Catharsis works really well with cards like Jaya and cards like uh, Ral, because off Ral alone you can deal 12 damage with this thing, so you only need to get opponent down to 12. All right, well, there's some, I guess, redemption for us for having to deal with nonsense in that last pack, uh, Krenko, very, very powerful rare. Makes me want to play more combat tricks like uh, Samet's Spirit. And it also works with uh, Grateful Apparition, so easy pick one. Another Spell Gorger over Widespread Brutality. I'm already splashing blue. I don't want to spread my resources too thin. And Spell Gorger is just like ridiculously good in our deck. Another spell gorger. Okay, I'll play three of these. It's an improvement over like uh, Raging Clunch. Probably won't need it. I mean, there is a limit to how many spell gorger rears you want to play, but I think three is fine. Probably don't want Sarkin's Catharsis in this deck. Not yet, at least. 
And I'm not liking these two Goblin Assault teams without a single Pegasus. I mean, yeah, turn four, like, get in for... Get in with, like, the Pegasus and, and uh, Assault team for six because it has haste. That's kind of a synergy. <clears throat> and, then, you know, especially if you have a makeshift battalion. There he is. So there's Legion. There's 10 District Legionnaire. I think I need to take him because as much as I need trust the Pegasus, I need early things. And 10th, 10th District Legionnaire can run away with the game. Yeah, it lets you scry one also that's very powerful. So right now I kind of want... Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to a couple more combat tricks. Like Turret Ogre is an improvement over one of these Goblin Assault teams, so we can cut it. Another Tenth District Legionnaire and another Tip of Trader. Hmm. Let's go all in. We'll, we'll get a couple of combat tricks. You could run away with the game with this thing. There's another Law Rune Enforcer, excellent. Fortunately, I don't have too many combat tricks right now. In fact, I only have Samut Spirit. I have plenty of non-creature spells for the spell vogers, but I would like to have maybe something else over this uh, Goblin Assault team. Like the one mana white uh, combat trick that draws your card, that would be good. Stone Blades would be good. Okay, Burning Prophets, perfect. I'm really not interested in splashing anymore. We just got so many playables. Wow, this is tricky. Here is Stone Blades and Wonder Strike. I think we want the Stone Blades. Blue is surprisingly open. Usually you don't see that happening. Yeah, the thing is, like, if we can get even one counter going with one of these 10 District Legionnaires and a Grateful Apparition, you can also run away with the game. Also good to have combat checks for, like, uh, Krenko. At this point, I might consider, like, cutting Kaya, playing one more combat trick, and playing 15 lands. That's also a possibility. This deck doesn't really need removal to win, it just wants to overrun its opponent as fast as possible. There's another Samet Spirit. What? Again, like, ugh. look at this. Wow, that's annoying. You know what? Honestly, like, this is, uh, especially with video, something like this is justification to just, like, complain and ask for a refund because this is not what I wanted to pick at all. And there's video evidence that this thing just randomly assign, assigns cards it thinks you want, which is kind of frustrating. So, yeah, I really wanted that last Samet Spirit, honestly. That's kind of what a deck needs. Otherwise, you just have like mediocre 2 2 haste creatures. 18 lands, we could probably cut planes. God, that's so frustrating. All right, let's just not, let's just try not to tilt and play. But that is not something that should happen, not by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, Simon Spirit's like really good with Krenko on turn four. You know, out of the blue, you're attacking. This thing becomes a four power. Make four power, four toughness worth of stats in one ones. Yeah, that, that's, you know, often something like that, at a minimum, it stabilizes you until you can find like your Wonder and Kaya. By the way, we really don't need to start Wonder in this, in this deck. Yeah, Wonder is more of a sideboard card. I'll take another turret over. Oh, 
wish I had I wish I had like a stupid combat trick. I don't because uh, magic likes to auto pick cards for people, but I'll try not to not to rant about that too badly. Sure. Spellkeeper. Well, if I get one more creature, I can attack through that. For now, I'm not finding any sources of red. So all I can do is attack with worst creature. That's about it. It would be nice to find a mountain. Okay. Not a mountain. All right, so the plan is end of our opponent's turn. Yeah, we can still attack with Worst Creature, but end of our opponent's turn, I'll tap down. I mean, actually, there's a, there's also an option to... Ah, uh, I didn't get the stopper. I also could have tapped down Center Nurture on his upkeep. This, this prevents him from ramping to, ramping to five this turn. This. So this gives me a clean attack anyway now. Yeah, I'm gonna do it this turn. I have nothing better to use my mana on. I can attack with Worst Creature. So let's do it now. So even if he taps it for mana, unless he wants to cast an instant, it's gonna go to waste. So this means that sorceries and planeswalkers and creatures you cannot cast for anything more than the number of lands you'll have on the board. Really annoying not uh, being able to find the source of red, but it's part of the game. You just need to suck it up, take your beats. Uh, we can beat Narset. Okay, Nissa, who shades the world? Oh no, that's not good. Oh god. Well. So this puts a counter on the makeshift battalion. Pretty much kills Narset unless he wants to throw away his spellkeeper weird. He might also have some sort of instant speed spell. Could have a giant growth. It's unlikely that he's playing the, the two mana green untap a creature, give a plus one plus four in reach. I don't think I've seen that card played once. I mean, not for nothing, but my board state's nothing to scoff at. 
with uh, two log run enforcers. I can tab the world down and I can keep going my make sure to time. So. Oh, come on. This is, this is just brutal. Um, all right, I'm gonna tab down the nurture again. On upkeep. And then I guess Manticore. I'm still tapping Manticore down. Yeah, we're just so far behind. I'm not sure how we can come back from this. Sarkin's Catharsis is still probably not good enough to play. All right, come on. Oh. I gotta say, this is quite painful. I need to just pass. All right, at this point, like, I think I lost, so I'm really just playing for information more than anything else. Tap down the two biggest things. All right, let's not waste time. <clears throat> I think I have enough information to know that I have no chance of winning unless I can hit my lands. I actually wonder, might have been good against them. All right, next turn we can play Turret Ogre, most likely, especially if he's stuck on lands. So this time the opponent's on the receiving end of Mana school. That's actually okay. okay. So next turn I can pump Rager to a 6-2. Okay. Yeah, Wonder doesn't really help me kill uh, the 
the planeswalker. Okay, so we opened, we have Gideon in our opening hand, so that's probably good. Unfortunately, he can't attack the turn he comes into play because he has summoning sickness. Two drop? Is that too much to ask for? I guess it's too much to ask for. Okay, okay. We got a chance. Let's do it, Gideon. So even if you don't have any legal targets, you could still plus them. And it says up to one. Okay, Challenger Troll, fine. <laughs> it's a matter of what we give it, right? So I might be thinking that I'm trying to get a free roll attack, but not exactly. Well, yeah, why not? Let's keep them on top. Under Drake, okay. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So let's give this indestructible again. And then we can uh, fin finish off the Drake with uh, Cyclops Electromancer. If he blocks the Spell Gorger, no blocks. In that case, I will just play a Toad Ogre and get in for two. Okay. So I'm guessing Gideon's going to draw some fire here, but Ogre has uh, reach. So unless he has removal. Is this Arlen? Okay, we can beat Arlen. Not too concerned. Okay. Mahiri stone blades. Well, Mahiri stone blades are good here. Let's go spell gorge are weird. Let's do lifelink. And let's attack Arlen and attack OP. So he's probably thinking about trading with the spell order. He could either chump, in which case, I mean, I don't care. Uh, Gideon just runs over the wolf if he wants to chump. Otherwise, Arlen goes to one loyalty. Yeah, this is what I wanted. So now we go 
in here is stone blades and all sorts of value. Okay. I can also just minus uh, Gideon Blackblade as well. So, all right, got there. A uh, bit awkward. Again, deck is missing a little, like one or two more combat tricks, and it would have been really, really good. But I won't say anything about the damn bots. Or, sorry, not the bots. The, I guess the program. Okay, so I can't attack with this creature anymore because of the snare spinner. Just play the spell go dream pass. I guess this is a good one. Okay. I do have two more turns to find uh, planes for Kaya. No good attacks for our opponent. Okay, actually, I'm going to is really good here. So let's go one, two, three, toss a mountain. A mass one. Okay, let's just pass and then. There's really no need to attack. We could get a huge attack here if we exile the snare spinner. We could get greedy and first cast Kaya. Let's go Kaya. Yeah, this is going to be ridiculously strong. This puts two more counters on the spell gorgers. We get rid of Trusted Pegasus. And we get in for eight. And the next turn we'll proliferate with Wonder Strike, putting out a counter on Kaya. Seems pretty good. She also shuts down Hexproof, which is an extra bonus. Okay, it's not even something we need to exile with Wonder Strike, to be honest. Because you can't even double block these spell gorgers, right? So what's the point? I'd rather save the exile effect for something more relevant. And let's just attack with this again. Okay. That's the dog as always. So one, two, three, four, five. Not that I needed to do that, but. Okay. 
So that seemed pretty easy. Maybe even a Sarkin's catharsis could work. But I'm not sure what my worst part is. Try it back. So I mean, so far the deck is performing kind of above expectation. Somehow I still don't think it's going to be a three no deck. It just doesn't. It feels like something missing. I mean, for me to go three no, I literally have to just get lucky and have Gideon or have my opponent be off to a super slow start. Because the deck doesn't have that much synergy, to be honest. Okay, so we're going to play Love Room Enforcer. Wow, still nothing, huh? Oh boy. Oh boy. So, uh, I'm kind of tempted to play like a Spellkeeper Gorge or even another 10th District Legionnaire to play around the counter spell. This way, when Gideon comes down next turn and Spell Gorge is going to become a 3 3, it's not the worst. Let's attack first, see what happens. I just don't want uh, Gideon to fall victim to. Uh, no escape. No sense in risking our best card when we're still making a play this turn. Our opponent's not developing the board. And we're playing essentially a 3 3 for 3 with Gideon coming down next turn. Okay. So, I think the best play is let's tap this down. <gasps> oh no, I did it wrong. Oh, that's frustrating. I can't play Gideon now. Let's just smash. That's so annoying. I should have probably played the spell, Spellkeeper. We spell are weird. weird. Uh, I mean, this is also not bad. I'm, I'm pressuring the opponent a ton. Yeah, that was sloppy to uh, tap a planes. I should know better. Been doing this for long enough. Okay, so maybe there's like a finality glory here. I'm not sure. If he plays the finality of glory at instant speed, it's a rare. Might even be a mythic. I, can't, I won't be able to tap Lauren Enforcer down. So I think what I'm probably going to do is let's just play Gideon. Let's give I guess Spellgorger Life link. Ah, you know what? We're gonna tap Centaur Nurture pre-combat so that if he has Finale to Glory, he has to play it now. Oh, Awakening of Vito Gazin. Okay. Uh <laughs> well. Pass. I don't think it's good to attack here. But now, now it makes sense what he was trying to do. In two turns, I can exile this. 
with Gideon's ability, which for now I'm not in rush. I can just keep developing my board. And I don't think my opponent wants to attack. So he's essentially at nine of the ogre, and then it can get him down to like five ambush. So what are you ambushing? Uh, the tapper, okay. It's fine. Wonder Strike would be pretty sick, or, uh, or Cranko, Cranko's also good. <laughs> Are the goblins attacking? They're not. Okay, that's actually better. I don't really want Gideon to die, so I think I'm just going to plus him again next turn because I can't get through the center on nurture anyway now because Law Enforcer is dead. So I don't mind taking up uh, Gideon's loyalty like up to seven and then knocking it back down again. Wow, attacking. What are you attacking, Gideon? So you're basically making me choose between Gideon and one of these tutus. I'll save Gideon, sure. Then I'll get a bunch of goblins I can just jump with forever. Yeah, Wonder Strike would be nice. I could even do it after attacks to get an extra counter on Krenko. Okay, okay. Yeah, Turd Ogre can stop that, I'm not too concerned. The life gain is relevant for opponent though because it kind of makes life a little bit Harder for us. I hope he's got nothing else here. He's got something else. Oh, soul burner. Okay. Ugh. All right. So let's go indestructible. Cranko. Let's get two goblins. Guess I might as well attack with Gideon. Right, he's indestructible. So you can just, well, no blocks, that's strange. Why would you just take that? All right, let's get you down to six. Now, we, now I wish I had like a hard fire to finish out the game. Uh, I could have totally blocked with Turd Ogre. <laughs> I didn't. I guess I don't uh, really care if Gideon takes two. But I should have totally blocked there. Again, with this card, you sometimes you fly into it, sometimes you forget that you can block with it. It's one of the most incredible things. Oh, um, okay. So let's again give Cranko indestructible. 
make three goblins. Now there's no point in attacking with Gideon. Let's just play Spell Gorger. We might have Lethal next turn. So I have 11 attackers. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blockers. Okay. It's not quite lethal, is it? Okay, well, it's definitely not lethal yet. Let's see if he attacks with the uh, Guard Mage again. That doesn't really matter. The, the proliferate's not going to... That's not the, the bodies from Krenko and indestructibility. That's what's going to take over the game. Yeah, and this time I will block. <laughs> and if your last card's giant growth or some two mana combat trick, then so be it. Nope. Okay. Marlon Enforcer is also good. All right, let me just do the math, make sure I'm not missing anything. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's not enough for people. Doesn't matter who I attack. So next turn, it's sleeping. I think there's no fog in this set. And you can count minus one blocker off Gideon's ability to exile. Funnel digging. He could really get us if he's got the board wipe spell, that'll be pretty sick. But otherwise, I'm pretty sure now it's uh, just. Yeah, it's pretty much game over. So see 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Versus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, it's seven. Uh, I think Hopi knows what's coming. Well, I gotta say this deck this deck is pleasantly surprised me. Gideon and Krinko combination is particularly particularly strong. And Hopefully this alpha strike is enough. And we have five blockers. Okay, minus 23. Not bad, not bad. Let's go to the finals. So do I think this, do, do I change my mind about this deck now? Not really. Again, it's uh, it can win if I can get a quick start against a slow opponent. 
but the lack of combat tricks is something that really highlights a missing synergy piece for this type of deck. Because white red wants to play a lot of combat tricks. It wants to trade. It has first strike. It has uh, spell gorgers. It's got the ten district legionnaires. You get the scry. You know if you if this and feather feather is like a highlight. Uh, what do you call it? It's a cornerstone of the of the archetype because if you cast um, combat tricks, you get them back. Basically, you get the cycling for free. All right, see you match three. All right. Welcome to the finals. Point Mulligans to six. Thereby increasing our chances of actually three, three and knowing with this deck. Okay. Puts a card on the bottom, so that's also kind of good. Means they did not find what they liked. I'm going to go 10th District Legionnaire here to start the clock. Oh boy. We should just start it. Why not? So best is to give, is there anything that can kill this thing on attacks in black, green? I don't think so. There's Liliana's Sacrifice. Or Liliana's Triumph that wouldn't protect some district legionnaire. So, yeah, better to give him lifelink. I wish Gideon had haze, but in that case, he would just be too good. Lifelink. Okay, so next turn we can double spell with Burning Prophet into the Trager. Probably the best play. Top of the Invasion. Actually, this is not the worst. Probably takes out Makeshift Battalion, I imagine. Yep. We might just get there. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Okay, play here. Arlen's Wolf is not good enough. Salmon Spirit could be good. We could play it on 10th District Legionnaire. All right, let's think this turn through. I need a minute. Let's see what the outcome will play. So you could have a giant growth. He's got one green on top. We gotta. We don't necessarily need to play around that. 
but let's, I want to make sure I, I do this right. So I'm going to take a minute to think this through. Okay, so we're going to get to both Trader indestructible. And we're going to attack with everything. So Senate Spirit is going to make 10th District. Um, yeah, this is actually really good. So I get to scry three times here, I believe. Once from the Prophet. Ooh, that's a good one. Let's keep that on top. The other scry abilities are useless. Oh, I'm sorry, not three times. Seven, it's, actually, no, yeah, Seven Spirit also lets you scry. Not that it matters. We know what's on top. And this is pretty much a blowout. Oh, I, I forgot to pump Paul uh, Rager, actually. Yeah, not that it matters because with Mickey Stone Blades, even if you place two creatures here, then we have lethal. Sure. Let's give, uh, yeah, Rager and Destructible. I don't really want to show Nakiri Stone Blades if I don't need to. So let's see how he blocks. Oh, never mind. It's lethal anyway. It doesn't matter how he blocks. Yeah, because I just pump. Yeah, this way we don't even need to show Stone Blades. Okay. Well, one away from a 3051. So I can skip Tharsis, Crunch. Still working so far. Let's not let's not mess with it. Let's just send it back. I'm not sure if the wonder is going to be good. I kind of like the deck as it is. Only thing I would consider adding is like a Sarkin's Catharsis as a late game alternate wind con, assuming we can get enough hits in with like uh, ten district legionnaires and combat tricks. Well, if we can draw two planes back to back, this deck, this hand is uh, amazing. Otherwise, it's just mediocre, but I think it's still good enough to keep. I got two chances, uh, two chances of finding the planes. There's one. Nope. Crunch Wrangler. Oh god, I wish I had Pyro Helix. Okay, so we got our first lanes. Do I want to trade for the Wrangler? I think I do. I mean, Black Green has so much removal that it's possible that by leaving 10 District uh, Legionnaire on defense. I'm not really doing much. I'm just going to die to some Soren's Thirst or something here. At least I get to trade it for something on the board as I work my way up towards getting Black Blade. <coughs> oh, there goes Gideon. I'm pretty sure he's going to take Gideon. He's not going to take anything else. He sees that I don't have a second planes, but come on. Five loyalty immediately when it comes down. Yep. 
I take one. So I guess it's spell gorger. Dreadmock can continuing to do its thing. Owen's Wolf. All right. Well, didn't find a land. Question is what I want to trade for the Wolf. Probably a makeshift battalion. Well, first let's attack, I guess. Maybe we could lure opponent into a block with the Wolf. No blocks. Yeah, I gotta I gotta play makeshift battalion because only creatures of power three or higher can block the wolf. So this is the block. I think I need to trade. I mean, if I do get like a, a land, I could play Spellgorger and Samet Spirit, and I could get in for a lot, but we don't know what else he's going to play. He could play like a Loom Hulk or, yeah, like a Mau or something. So. Let's just do this and. I'll attack with one spell gorger. Right, so the opponent fell for it. That's a cheap trade. That's a cheap trade. But now when the Heary Stone Blades and Wondrous Strike, we can, we can do a lot of damage. Let's keep this on top. I'm sorry about my dog. I mean, if opponent doesn't have removal, this could be it. The dog tends to agree. In case you're wondering, his name is Trevor. He's like 110 pounds of just wolf killer. Still attacking with dreadlock and Uh, I don't really want to honor the God Pharaohs. Let's just attack with both and then the Hiri Stone Blades if, if there's no blocks. Interesting. You know what? I'm still going to Nakiri Stone Blades. I'm not doing anything better with my mana anyway. I'm not casting onto the God Pharaoh this turn. Unless I want to discard Nakiri Stone Blades, so I might as well use them. My opponent's down to one card. He could sag the zombie army to Dreadmalkin, which is probably what he's thinking of doing. But my life total is quite high to where I'm not too concerned and he takes six goes to 12. So now I have lethal on board with wonder. Well, 
let's just assume the dog is celebrating our wow attacking that is concerning i guess he's not planning to block with dread malkin okay Let's attack first. Okay, so it looks like a uh, chum block. And sacking again to make Dreadmalk in a 5-5. Five, five. And now we'll play Grateful Apparition. Well, maybe that's not the correct play. Maybe I should honor the God Pharaoh to make sure I hit 5. Yeah, actually it's better to play under the God Pharaoh here. And this card, Grateful Apparition. This I should have thought of this earlier. It would have gotten an extra point of damage too. I don't think it's going to matter. Keeping everything back, yep. All right, this is it. We could even do Kana. So let's play around the counter spell and do Wonder Strike in case uh, he has no escape. All right, so that resolves in the spin of shit. Okay, sorry about the barking, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Sorry I kept doubting my deck, but I really didn't feel like it had everything we needed. It, however, had that and plenty more. And this would be trophy number nine. And we're on a roll. So let's get to 10, maybe, and see if we can go back to back. See you next round.